Are incomplete dominant genes better in ball pythons? In today's video, I wanna break down the incomplete dominant morphs or CODOM as most people call them and how they give you more flexibility, faster results, and how they could potentially be something a little bit better to focus on than stacking a bunch of recessive genes. So most everybody's talking about all the big recessive projects. Clown, Pied, Hypo, DG, Ultramel, and yes, Sunset. And don't get me wrong, they are all amazing. But for me, and in my mind, the incomplete dominant genes, those are the ones that really help a project stand out. I wanna say that there are only so many recessive genes that you can stack that make sense. One recent pretty big disappointment is um, obviously the puzzle clown. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense to stack some of these recessives. At what point does it become useful versus good to look at versus when you're combining the right incomplete dominant genes not only does that give you added flexibility but it also gives you a very wide variety of options and different things that can be produced within every single clutch so i do kind of want to talk a little bit about the kind of theory or my kind of thoughts behind this and then dive into some specific animals um, a little bit later on in the video. So I like to think of the recessives and incomplete dominance a little bit like cooking. So you have the recessives, which are gonna be like your chicken, your steak, your fish, kind of the main course. And then you're gonna have the incomplete dominant genes, which are basically the seasoning, spices, and the sides. Those are what's really needed to make a very satisfying dish. And in the same light, that's exactly what's needed to make basically a ball python that stands out and really has that extra something that makes it just that much better. So when we're talking about incomplete dominant and recessive mutations, it's almost the same thing. You're looking at either one copy of a gene, two copies of a gene, or zero copies of a gene. The big benefit with the incomplete dominance is that you are seeing a visual result whenever an animal has one copy of the gene, which in the recessives, that would be a heterozygous animal. Now, when you have two copies of the gene, that's going to make the super animal in most cases. And that is going to be typically a much more powerful example of that mutation. Likewise, in recessives, if you have two copies of that mutation, you're going to hit a clown, a pie, a sunset, an ultramel, so on and so forth. That is the visual expression of that gene. So it makes it a little bit easier when you think about it, when animals either have one copy of that gene or two copies of that gene. I think another interesting kind of concept to consider when you're thinking about the incomplete dominant genetics is that that's something that a newer breeder could really use to help kind of set themselves apart. Focusing on select incomplete dominant mutations to put into these already established recessive mutations could be a way to kind of get themselves out there a little bit more and there's not going to be as much guessing as far as like whenever they go to move that project or sell that, sell that animal because the people that are interested could visually see that that animal is what it's supposed to be. And it's not one of those kind of trust me, bro, I'm a new breeder and I don't really have any kind of reputation or I don't have any kind of, um, you know, kind of backing to prove that this animal is what I say it is. So another thing to consider with the incomplete dominant animals is that if someone is a new breeder and they put these incomplete dominant genetics into existing recessive projects, they're going to end up with a variety of animals within those clutches, but those animals simultaneously are gonna be a little bit easier for them to market, and you're not gonna be a new breeder trying to move a bunch of het animals when you don't necessarily have an established reputation. So that could make moving some of these things a little bit easier. And another thing we'll get into later is the varied look and overall the more, I guess, punchy a lot of these incomplete dominant gene animals tend to be in comparison to recessives. One example that I can think off my head is uh, Brittany and Andrew from Ready Check Reptiles that are kind of friends of ours that we talk pretty often, but they produced some absolutely stunning um, banana clowns recently. And it's like, just looking at those animals objectively, those are very beautiful animals. So for them not having moved a ton of animals or produced a ton of animals so far, 
this is something that they could market online, go to local shows, do different things like that, and then be able to get a customer base kind of underneath them as kind of a proof source that they're doing the right thing when it comes to their animals. Now, unfortunately, this is not something that we necessarily did whenever we started getting our group of ball pythons. So, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just at the time, the incomplete dominant genetics that I was interested in, I was not really able to get those in some of those projects. So it's one of those things that I had to kind of do it myself and kind of build my own program that way. And now I'm finally starting to see the results of that. But that's going to be a topic for another video coming out soon. So our Sunset Ultramel project is a perfect example of that. When we first got into the ball pythons coming from BOAs, the Sunset project and the Ultramel project were projects that I was very deeply interested in. And I was able to pick up some Sunset animals and I was able to pick up some Ultramel animals. However, all of these were pretty much just straight Ultramel or Sunset and the incomplete dominance that I did have on the Sunset side, they were het females and not exactly the best direction or not exactly the incomplete dominant genetics that I wanted to have. So going forward, I have produced animals that have the incomplete dominant genetics that I want that are gonna be het for Sunset, het for Ultramel, different things like that that fit within those projects. And then I'm later going to be plugging those in. So again, kind of goes to the benefit of what I mentioned in our uh, video last week, you know, basically talking about having all those girls that are kind of sitting in the back burner or at least kind of sitting in the racks, you know, waiting for that opportune male to put into them to really get out those genetics that you want to really help push your projects forward. And on that light, I do want to bring up a male that we got a while back and he is a black pastel cypress blackhead hypo clown. So very gene-packed animal with a lot of genetics that we do like in pretty much all of those projects. And we have several females that we're going to be able to take him to and then kind of help push forward by using the fact that he is basically a triple codom, double recessive, into really cool projects to even get further incomplete dominant genetics in there, some of which are allelic, which makes it really interesting because with those allelic animals, you end up producing basically no normals. They're either going to be one or the other. And right now, I think that that is kind of an important position to be in because you're going to produce less normal type animals. And, you know, those animals, unfortunately, they're not being picked up by the droves. There's not a bunch of pet stores that are trying to beat down people's door or anything like that. So minimizing the byproduct or the normal animals within your clutches is going to be really helpful. One of the reasons why we ended up getting him, it kind of goes to the point that you're able to get those incomplete dominant genetics from the male side into your projects very quick in comparison to if you were trying to put a whole new recessive into those projects. Now, if you're trying to get a super form, then it's a little bit more complicated because you obviously need it on the female side. So the speed and flexibility of the incomplete dominant genes. That's one of the biggest reasons why that male works out so well for us is by taking him into some of these females that we have, we're able to interject those genes into those projects for things that we already do not have. And what that later means is better holdbacks for you, animals that don't quite fit your plan, you can move those out. Two females that I have planned for him specifically are going to be a stranger hypo, het for clown, and a GHI clown, het for hypo. So with both of those projects, we're getting 100% visuals, 50% visual for the other thing, but then we're also going to be getting a wide variety of incomplete dominant genes. Between the blackhead, the cypress, the black pastel, the stranger, that's going to be pretty cool. And then the other one is the incomplete dominance GHI. All of those genes play very well together and should produce a very unique kind of range of possibilities between them all. GHI and Blackhead, for instance, are extremely reactive with one another. Let's take a quick look at the GHI Blackhead doublehead exanthic clown girl that I have. I really like the deep dark blacks and somewhat faded pattern. Layering color recessives on this pattern is going to give you a very unique and I believe desirable look. 
So that's kind of the important situation when you are layering all these incomplete dominant genes with these recessives is you're able to say, make this, I don't know, GHI, blackhead, cypress clown, but then it's hypo and then maybe it's exanthic. So you end up with like this true ghost combination of crazy. There are infinite possibilities with the things that you can do and no one animal is gonna look the same, especially when you're combining different incomplete dominants. The incomplete dominant genes that I like might not be the same ones that you like, and there's definitely gonna be some room for overlap within projects that I'm interested in, interested in and projects that other people are interested in. So now let's take a look at some of the animals that I'm pretty excited for in the coming future. Here we have a Hypo Hurricane Double Hat Puzzle Rainbow. This is a no-brainer. You're adding an additional pattern gene to the puzzle, which has bold markings, but enhancing and pushing them, twisting and turning them. So you're able to get a very unique, very strong and exaggerated puzzle look by adding something such as Hurricane. The same thing could be said if you're talking about adding acid or any of those other kind of pattern enhancing genes that would work really well and react super strong with spot nose or with puzzle rather. Spot nose is another good one though. Another perfect animal for kind of layering these incomplete dominant genetics is going to be the confusion hypo. It provides a really cool color an interesting almost green kind of yellow and then you also end up getting kind of that disruption within the pattern adding for a lot of contrast this mixed into other projects is obviously going to give you a very unique look now here we have this black pastel acid head exanthic female she is stunning super rich deep blacks just asking to be put in the exanthic project to really enhance the contrast now I'm really excited to put this female in our true ghost projects. I really love that kind of steel blue kind of look that those true ghost animals have and putting acid in there is really going to make it something just extra. Now it may sound fairly simple, but that's kind of the beauty of the incomplete dominant genetics. I mean, Justin has proven it time and time again by putting all these different incomplete dominant genes that some of them are not very well heard of or whatever into these projects and suddenly it brings a whole new life to them. You know, a lot of stuff has already been done with clown. There's still plenty more to do with it, especially when you're talking about making an ultramel, exanthic, sunset, whatever, you know, but there's just so much left to be done with the other pattern mutations such as puzzle putting all of these same genetics into puzzle that worked well in clown, there's just, again, endless opportunities to make really, really cool stuff, especially when you're compounding these incomplete dominant genetics that exaggerate pattern with something like puzzle, which doesn't necessarily change the body color, which again, leaves opportunity to make those animals exanthic, sunset, ultramel, there really is a unlimited you know, combination of possibilities with all of these animals. It's just a matter of which ones are the most interesting to you. So here we have something a little unique. It is a confusion pied. We all know what a pied looks like, but adding confusion changes it a bit. It boldens the pattern, increases the contrast, and it even kind of gives it a very unique kind of copper brown kind of color adding other projects that react well with Pied, like Hurricane, Blackhead, and stuff like that, could basically make something really special. And again, broken record, endless possibilities. Super chocolates. Man, these are easily one of my favorite animals that I've produced this season so far, probably outside of the Ultramel Sunset. But I absolutely love all of the blushing, all of the... I guess, character that gets brought into this animal. It's not super clean. It's not super dirty. You end up with a lot of really unique colors, really unique tones. And I think that in itself could be a very cool base to put other mutations into. 
things like hurricane, things like confusion or acid. And then, of course, obviously changing the color with something like Ultramel, with Hypo, with Sunset. That's going to be cool. A super chocolate sunset. I mean, it's going to be pretty neat. So all that's to say, just don't overlook the incomplete dominant genetic mutations. There's quite literally so many things left to do with them before things need to be a four, five, six gene recessive animal. There's plenty of double recessive or even single recessive combinations with these incomplete dominant genetics that we have not seen. And again, you know, whenever people are, say, walking around a reptile show or whatever, if they see het this, het that, that's not really going to, I guess, kind of make any sense to them. But visually, when they're walking by, when they see, like, a super gravel, you know, that has, I don't know, confusion in it, a super blackhead. One of my favorite animals from the Daytona show was the one that uh, Brock and Winston brought that was, like, a super blackhead Mojave leopard something. I th but either way, really cool animal. Very variable and a super unique pattern. That to me is way more interesting than any just regular desert ghost, regular ultramel, regular hypo. It just stands out. It's a very unique pattern, unique color, and a very different look which is basically a very long way of saying it doesn't need the kitchen sink to look cool. You don't have to put every single ingredient possible in an animal to get something that gives you a very nice result. So let me know down in the comments what your favorite incomplete dominant gene is either at the moment or one you're looking to get into.